to, to keep this day, because this day is a very special day in the life of our church. Elizabeth and Jill have always talked about the way silence is the, the very thing that unites us across faiths. Silence is the language of, of the saints. Silence is the language of God. Silas is the place where all people across difference can meet and find a deeper sense of unity. So for all of us at St. Martin's, this day is a very precious day. It's a day when we learn from one another. It's a day when we listen. In our world, we spend a lot of time talking, but we don't spend much time listening. So this is a day of listening. It's a day of replenishment, because I think more than anything, silence replenishes the soul. It's a day of refreshment, because I think more than anything, when we are truly silent, we are refreshed inwardly from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. So I would like to welcome you all Although you can't be here face to face, although you can't be here in the flesh, as the Christian gospel calls it, you can be with us virtually, and you can be with us in your souls and in your hearts as we join across this nation and perhaps across the world, if there are people from other countries joining us, to join in this wonderful day, put together, together by Jill and by Elizabeth from um, silence in the city and uh, just this day to unite us in prayer and in silence. So let me begin now with a moment of silence. Thank you. 
Now, I'm going to be speaking to you later. Um, but before we go back to Jill, can I ask you to, if you're um, new to this um, um, Zoom business, can you all go on to mute so that we can be in complete silence? Otherwise, we'll hear the kind of feedback of people. So if you're not speaking, we all need to be in mute. Remember Jack Cornfield, the great uh, Buddhist uh, master of meditation, he said he was meditating and there was a fly and the fly came and landed on his nose and he was trying to keep very, very silent and the fly kept on landing on his nose. And he was trying to keep very still and very silent, but all he could think about was the fly landing on his nose. And then the fly started to crawl down his nose towards his mouth. And he kept on concentrating on the fly and whether the fly was going to go into his mouth. And uh, finally, he slapped the fly and disturbed everybody in the meditation. And the master of the meditation said to him, Perhaps the real skill of meditation is to learn to become so attentive to the fly that everything else ceases. So when we're disturbed, I'm always thinking of that because I think we hear a little noise and we're disturbed. But I wonder if we can still meditate even when those disturbances come. So hopefully today we will find the attentiveness which helps us to be still even when the fly is on the end of our nose, even when the thought comes that wants to disturb us, even when the noise or the worry or the thought of coronavirus comes into our mind or our plans for Christmas start to enter in, we can still be attentive to the moment now. What a special time together. And thank you for all those who have helped us to organize it. And thank you for the privilege of having you with me, at least with the internet, here in this beautiful church at St. Martin in the Fields. So I'm gonna mute now and you can Thank you, Richard. I think I remember that story for a long time um, and with your permission, use it. Um, just before we, um, I introduce you to Leslie, and I'll be very brief, um, I would just like to um, invite you. We very often, we're not in the church today, and we're in a kind of very big room. There's a lot of us here. There's a lot of us in different time zones, and yet there's only this one moment, which sounds paradoxical that somebody can be somewhere at, by what time is it now, nine o'clock in London, 10 o'clock in on the Europe and, and much um, later in the day in other parts of the world. So what I'd like to do is for a moment, bring us together, even as a group here, as one body coming together in silence. So I would like to invite you and I uh, to just be where you are, really connecting with your whole being or whatever you're sitting on or wherever you are. I mean, I've had Zoom conferences with people in cars, in balconies, in all sorts of places, but just connect perhaps, really be present to your own body, your own self, the space you're in, be aware of the room around you. Your wholeness. Be aware of your breath, allowing it to flow freely or just as it is without changing it. And be aware of the others in this room, however far away there's no space. There's only now. And we are all breathing the same breath. In a sense, we're all 
living or experiencing the same life force. And we're all being held by the same presence, sustained. So in a sense, perhaps we can just expand our awareness to be one living, breathing body um, for this first session being with Leslie, who's in Waterford. And then we move on to Rajesh who will be in Wales. But I'm just going to hand over to Leslie now, who's going to lead us in Visio Divina, which might be completely new to some of you. We, we may be familiar with Lexio Divina, which is the divine reading of the scripture. And Visio Divina is, could be called divine seeing. So I'm going to mute myself now and hand you over to Leslie. Thank you, Jill, and uh, good morning to everyone from a beautiful sun-filled morning uh, on the south coast of Ireland from a, a seaside town called Tremor. And it's great to be joining you today. A couple of weeks ago at 7.30 one morning, I got a call from my friend Owen. I'm driving along the M50 the M50 is the great ring road that surrounds Dublin city. The sun is rising. He went on. It's huge and powerfully filling the horizon with a great glow of red and orange. My friend Owen is a manager of a service that supports people with intellectual disabilities. Always a tough job, but this year the pandemic has changed everything. Usually he, when he calls, it's a brief touching base. All okay? Today is different. He is staying with this sunrise. I hear that in him as he describes his heart opening up to something awesome and expansive, despite sitting in a tailback on the way to his stressful job. I stop short of asking that question and how did it make you feel? But he got there anyway. It makes me feel like going on. Each one of us has had that glorious moment when we feel held and at one with what we encounter. We too know that glorious sunrise. Trappist monk Thomas Keating, one of the founders of the Centering Prayer and contemplative outreach movement wrote, the divine presence is happening in, through, and amidst every detail of life. It penetrates all that exists. Everything in virtue of coming into existence is in relationship to this source. Visio Divina, Seeing with the eye of the heart, sacred seeing, facilitates a relationship with an image, patiently being with it, receptive in mind and heart, perhaps even in dialogue with it. In the stillness, we allow the image to reach beyond our intellect and into the unconscious level of our being, a place that cannot be accessed directly. In wonder, we are invited to look at every aspect of an image and ponder it as an encounter with the divine at a non-verbal heart level. The image comes alive with personal meaning. This is the same movement of the spirit which we can experience in Lectio Divina with scripture, gazing, reflecting, responding, and resting. The ancient practice of praying with icons has long been part of our tradition. And I was so delighted to listen to Aiden Hart earlier this morning uh, at this meeting. It was just a wonderful presentation, which uh, connected us with praying with icons. 
other images also prompt or indeed provoke paintings, photographs, nature. As a child, my parents brought us to the great free places in Dublin, the wonderful museums and art galleries. There I was happy to roam around and stop and gaze at paintings that have remained dear friends in my life. In the few weeks between our level five lockdowns here in Ireland, I managed to get back to visit our National Gallery. And I'm going to share the screen now, hopefully, with one of my beloved paintings. There we go. So I managed to get back to gaze again at William Leach's In a Convent Garden. This has been one of my favorite paintings for many decades since I was a small girl, full of light and also shade. And that day I stood before it and simply looked and breathed and breathed. And each time I visit, it is the same beautiful presence I know so well. And each time I am moved as I would be when I encounter a dear friend. It is a relationship. The first time I found Vizio Divina on a retreat program was at a retreat hosted by Contemplative Outreach. I was excited and also intrigued. I asked one of the retreat leaders, Gail Fitzpatrick, what inspired the inclusion of this contemplative practice, Vizio Divina. Gail told me of her request to Father Thomas to include this right-sided, right side of the brain practice. As an art therapist, she was aware that for many people, words did not work. And that Physio Divina, this practice of using images, opened up the possibility of including those who are constantly left out of our wordy, predominantly left-sided world. And I can resonate with that as during my working life with people with intellectual disabilities, many who could not speak, I learned the importance of developing relationship in alternative and creative ways through music and movement and art. The divine presence is happening in, through and amidst every detail of life. It penetrates all that exists. Everything in virtue of coming into existence is in relationship to this source. So, in the time we have, let's experience this right-sided practice of Visio Divina. And I want to just bear with me as I as I move on to the next slide. Ah, yes, thank you. This is Eucharistia by William Congdon, who was a favorite artist of Thomas Merton. So first I'll say a few words about the painting and then some signposts or guidelines to bring us to silence. What are we looking at? And what are we looking to discover in this image through the eyes of our hearts? We see the central focus is the omnipotence of the sun gathering to itself and radiating from itself and in some ways consuming the entire creation, both heaven and earth by its flooding light. All elements are present in this representation of the oneness, water, earth, light and darkness, illumination and desolation. And some brief guidelines for gazing, reflecting, responding, resting. First gazing, Gaze on the image for a couple of minutes with an openness, taking in the colors, the shapes, without analysis, just 
noticing what you see with your rational mind. Then reflecting. When you are ready, allow the literal details to pass and make space in your heart to open up and interact with the image. What are you drawn to? Allow a word or an emotion to rise up in you as you connect with the image. Stay with that image or emotion as you continue to reflect on the image. Now responding, you may wish to sketch the image and experience your own nonverbal response or you may wish to place yourself in the scene or to journal. How is this image bringing you to the experience of God today? A prayer may arise as you ponder your response. And then resting, rest in the presence of the image. You may like to close your eyes as you contemplate your experience of praying with the image. Feel free to move back and forth through the moments of gazing, reflecting, responding, and resting as the spirit moves you. And at the end of the prayer time, gaze again at the image and acknowledge your unique relationship with God. So we will spend about um, 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 18 minutes with the image. And at the end of the time of silence, you'll hear the singing bowl that will sound to herald the completion of the time. And to begin, I invite you to close your eyes and breathe in faith with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is with us as we pray with this image. When you're ready, open your eyes and gaze and reflect and respond and rest with this image as the spirit moves you. Ponder. This image is multifaceted. Each part of it has its own story to reveal. What is your personal message today?
Thank you. Thank you for taking this time to pray with the eyes of your heart. Just a few words about the framework or guidelines. Uh, and there are as many frameworks or guidelines for practicing Visio Divina as there are shades of green. So the invitation is to try one out and stick with it for a while and keep going until you find one that works for you. The thing about having a practice, as many of you know, using the same guidelines is that eventually the guidelines fall away and we find that we don't even think about the framework anymore. We're just being in relationship with what we are gazing on. And one of the gifts um, that I have found over the past number of months is that beautiful uh, Nazareth contemplative walk on a Saturday morning early. Uh, with Father Richard and Kath, uh, Reverend Kath and some of the wonderful team, creative team at St. Martin in the Fields. And uh, I'm just, uh, I paraphrase Father Richard, he, 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 he said a line last weekend, I think, let the window be the way into the miracle of God. And I think that says it all. I, I thought it was lovely. Um, also to say that if anyone has any questions questions about this practice of Visio Divina, I'd ha be happy to respond if you'd like to email me. I'm sure Jill would um, forward on any questions anybody would have. And uh, finally, just um, before I finish, just one more image. So it's a sunrise. I want to return to the sunrise and this time my sunrise it's the one that made me feel like going on. This little harbour is about five minutes walk from my home. And when I found it waiting for me one morning earlier this month, the words of Hafiz, the 14th century Pers Persian mystic came to mind. Even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights the whole world. Thank you. Thanks, Jill. Thank you, Leslie. Um, and thank you for that wonderful sunset at the beginning and end as well. That was absolutely wonderful. And <clears throat> Leslie, um, studied this and talks about this and shares it in her daily life actually by moving around and we have lots of phone calls and she said how can I let people go outside so that they can walk and practice Visio Divina <clears throat> in the morning but, but no that was wonderful thank you so much now we have a few minutes um, uh, if you'd like a little stretch um, to move yourself from your position. I think it's very good to be conscious that our bodies do need to move. And then we'll be moving into, um, I ask Father, uh, Father Richard to ring the gong. Um, and I'd like to read something very short from Raymond Panica, and then we'll have two minutes silence. And then we will, um, I'll introduce you to Rajesh, David, who will be helping us to sound into silence. <laughs> 